welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. And we are back again for another review for the Real Housewives. Um, actually, this is my first time reviewing the whole entire season. Last time you saw me about this, I reviewed the reunion and kind of did a full recap of the season because I entered the chat later on to well, I was watching watching the season, but I didn't review it. And this is for Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, and this is season five, and this is episode one, and it's called Costumes or Contour. Um, and this was an amazing first episode. I think this is going to be an amazing season. Mary J. Cosby is back. Um, so the really only, the only melanin cast member on this show and a lot has transpired in between the reunion and this season. So I think the time off um, for filming and getting people, you know, back to where they need to be was what we needed. And yeah, they're bringing it. And I will say this, this is a much larger, the cast has gotten a lot bigger. Um, so I think this is a franchise that's finally coming up, coming on its own. Um, you know, the first couple seasons, we just weren't sure about it. And really, a lot of the show has been based on scandal after scandal after scandal. So this will be kind of the first season where I don't think there's really going to be a scandal per se that's huge that will um, be the driving force. But you never know because we didn't, we didn't see the other one coming last season um, with Monica. And so... Yeah, um, we're basically seeing the aftermath of all that, and we're also getting to new, meet new people and getting caught up with Mary. And it looks like from the previews of the season, we're going to see more of Mary's like life and um, kind of go into some of the things that are going on with her and her family. And if you've been following what's been going on with her and her family, her Son has been in the news. Um, we're not going to get into that until it comes up. But I am looking forward to seeing how that gets handled and what happens with that. And I'm going to apologize ahead of time. My allergies, yet again, are a nightmare. Um, so this is also delayed, too, because I just came back from vacation. When I was in Maine, I didn't have any allergies. I'm allergic to here. I'm allergic to Chicago. Because <laughs> I can't even say I'm allergic to all the Midwest because my allergies are not as bad when I'm back home. So it's whatever elements are close to Lake Michigan, we don't like it. And I don't, and I hate that for me, but that's what it is. So it's one of those things I'm definitely going to be considering when I move. But anyway. That's not why we're here. Let's get into the episode. And this was like a normal size episode, so it wasn't a super size episode. And the show starts off with an amazing highlight of what's to come this season, kind of what I just alluded to, some of the things. And Heather is narrating it. And one thing I will say, there's a couple things I want to say here. The production team... An editing team that does this particular franchise, Chef's Kiss, because it's it's very climatic and very um, Utah has its own thing when it comes to all the other franchises, and it stands out to a certain degree, and and it, and, a, and in a good way with the other franchises. So this, yeah, and also with Heather narrating the whole entire thing. It kind of gives me this feel that she is kind of the head honcho of the show. And that was what she wanted, right? If you've seen the previous seasons, you kind of saw this coming that Heather always played a certain role. And, it, you know, after the second season, you realize that wasn't really her. She was playing that role so that she could be the head honcho. Um, and she got what she wanted. Like certain people, she calculated, like, I don't know. I got my good eye on Heather. Um, if you watch last season, when you know, you know, two things can be true. Yeah, Monica was a trash for what she did last season. Jennifer Shaw, horrible human being. 
But Heather clinged on to both of them like a moth to a flame and played victim. When at the end of it, to me, it seems like she knew what she was doing the whole entire time. But that's neither here nor there. That's a whole entire another subject. Anyway, so this episode does start, though. The official episode starts with um, Lisa arriving at Blue Sky Ranch for an event that she is putting together. And she arrives there with her sister-in-law, Kim. And at first I thought this was a friend of, but we meet the friend of later on. So that's the reason why I even put her name here. And she basically is throwing the Galentine's Day party. So it's a girl's um, Valentine's Day deal. Um, but she's calling it Bezos. And um, Lisa recaps last season a bit, hinting that she has issues with some of the women, um, particularly Whitney. And we see a flashback from two weeks ago prior to the party where she's actually confiding in um, Heather and um, Angie about her issues with Whitney. And what Whitney did, apparently she went on this podcast and kind of ran her mouth about Lisa and basically calling Lisa the villain and saying, you know, I guess certain things that wasn't the most positive, but she really just called Lisa the villain. And the thing is, we if you watched last season, you know where it came from. Whitney and Lisa's issues towards the end of last season because of the Monica situation never got resolved. Basically, everything else that wasn't tied to Monica, all the other issues, which there were plenty, never got resolved at all. And so Whitney still has resentment towards that from last season. And so she shared it during the podcast. And Lisa feels a way about it. But Lisa's putting... Um, 20 on 10. But then also Whitney's doing the same thing because Whitney literally calls her the villain. That Lisa's the villain. And it's just like, girl! And someone, a new cast member said the right thing to one person, but I feel like it applies to all of them. A lot of y'all need a thesaurus. <laughs> a dictionary. Like, the fact that some of the words that these ladies use are so loaded, and you know why, it's for reality TV, is to create drama, but like, I just don't like when people create drama and be like, well, what did I do? Which is what Whitney is like the queen of doing. Um, she kind of is like the um, Ashley Darby of this cast. I feel like every cast has like an Ashley Darby. Um, I, I mentioned her because she is, like, the most obvious of everyone when she does her thing. But, like, I feel like since then, everyone has someone who does that. And we know that Winnie's that. But anyway, um, the only difference is Ashley Darby gets away with it. And Winnie, towards the end of this episode, did not. <laughs> so anyway, moving on. Um, little by little... Um, the ladies are arriving, and this is just all, so Lisa invited other people, of course, and probably just to fill up the party that weren't, you know, on the show, um, and so we see one-on-one, -on -one, little by little, everyone's arriving. So, um, Mary and Angie are first to arrive together. And so we find out after the reunion, apparently Mary and Angie became like besties after the reunion. Um, and they both share in their confessionals how it took place. Mary does appear to really like Angie, like actually. I don't think it's, I partially I think it's for the show because Angie did come off on the other side at the end of last season. It's kind of the fan favorite yet again. Um... And so I think that's partially it. But I think also, um, out of everyone, I do see Angie getting along with uh, Mary the most. And really, Angie does need other friends on the show. And she does have other friends, but towards the end of this episode, I don't know if, we, I don't know if that's really a thing or not. We'll find out. 
Um, I don't want to spoil it, but a lot happens at the end of this episode. Um, and then basically Angie in her confessional states like, yeah, after the reunion and after she stated that she liked me and I kind of, you know, helped her get lipstick off her teeth. Um, Mary invited her to Kathy Hilton, Hilton's Christmas party. And then from there, they just, you know, started hanging out. And that's how that kind of worked. And by the way, Mary has came a long way. Those wigs, she's doing that. She's looking good. She's looking good. Um, but anyway, so then next we see that Heather and the one of the official friends of Brittany arrives. And um, Heather definitely looks different to the point where Mary even mentions it. And um, yeah. Heather's on the Ozempic, and she even openly admits that she's on the on Ozempic. So she's looking very skinny, um, but it does look good on her. I will say that. Um, I really do wish she could have just lost the weight herself, but, you know, anyway. Um, and then, oh, also, too, I think, um, I forgot if during the reunion if it happened or not. I don't think it did. I think after the union, that's when Heather got some face work. Because um, we did see on Watch What Happens Live after the reunion that her face looked different, too. So, like, Heather does look different. Like, not just, like, um, the weight loss. It's also, she did get some work done on her face. But, um, so she, she does, she looks good, though. Um, and then, from there, we do see that, the we do see and meet the new housewife, um, Bronwyn. And, um, technically, well, there's no technically, um, Lisa's one who's bringing her in as a new housewife. And Rowan is a, she is a fashion girly. She definitely is a fashion girly. Um, and she's wearing this kind of over the top contour looking outfit, hence the title and gonna, it's going to come up a little bit, um, within this, um, scene. And um, we do find out, besides the fact that she is a fashion girly, she likes to wear over-the-top stuff kind of regularly. And we see pictures of her going to Paris Fashion Week. This, this is just what she does. We never did find out what she does for a living, per se. Um, it sounds like she is like a quintessential housewife where her husband is the breadwinner and she's just kind of the tro trophy wife. We do find out also that her husband is substantially older than her. Like her, her husband's in, in her 60s and she's like 38. So she's actually younger than me. Um, not to tell myself, I just did. Whatever. And <laughs> I don't look like my age, so it's fine. Which I can't say that for all the women on this show. But sorry, I can't help it. Uh, black don't crack and it just be obvious sometimes I'll watch some of these shows. But anyway um so but um that when she um has a daughter we find out she has a daughter her daughter does look like a mini her and it's actually kind of cute um and her daughter's like on her way to college i guess too so that's what that's going on and she also has six dogs and then next um meredith arrives and um with meredith we do have a flashback of Meredith talking to um, Heather at Meredith's new house. And let's, let's get into that a little bit. So three weeks prior to the um, party, Heather meets Meredith at her new house. And for those who are not familiar with this show or who haven't been watching this show, who are now watching this season um, because of the aftermath of everything that happened um, with last season. Because I feel like, this is going to be the show that gets the most new audience because of everything that happened last season. Like, that was such a pivotal moment on this show. Um, we do see here that... So there's a running thing with Meredith. Meredith has been in a different house every single season because she doesn't own any of her houses she rents. And so... There's been kind of an underlying thing where everyone's kind of been saying it without saying it because Meredith does not, you, confronting her just never works. Um, and we'll, we'll see in this episode that it just never works. 
Um, Meredith has been questioned about her money being funny. And has been questioned about her money being funny for a while. And then also her um, relationship not with her husband not being really what she presents out to the world. Um, and that's been kind of an underlying thing that's been in Meredith's story, story arc. Um, so every single season she is in a new house, which is kind of weird. Um, because in a normal life, that we wouldn't care. But because it is a housewife's, she always is in a new big house every single season, but she doesn't own it. It's renting. So it, it does come off kind of weird, and she even gets called out for it a little bit in this episode. But anyway, so Meredith is um, sharing with um, Heather that she feels like none of the issues when it comes to the issues that she had with the ladies last season got resolved. Um, because she basically, towards before the uh, Monica and the Reality Von T stuff it all happened, the ladies were all kind of getting up on Meredith about her BS. And so her BS kind of got swept under the rug. But like from Meredith's standpoint, she's not on BS the ladies or her apology because from Meredith's standpoint, she's trying to deflect and say that everything that um, they're accusing her of was actually Monica doing all that. And if you watch a show, you know that's not really true. You know, Meredith probably set Monica up. And some of the ladies know that and are not buying um, Meredith's antics because Meredith does this kind of thing every single season. <clears throat> it's just... Last season, the scandal was such a huge scandal, they just all tabled it and gained up on Monica to get her out of there because she violated the trust. Um, so, anyway. Um, so then, from there, we see Whitney is on her way with um, Melanie, and I don't know if that's her name or not because she was not truly completely introduced yet. Um, cause I believe she's going to be the other friend of, um, they're on their way to, um, Lisa's and this is controversial because Lisa invited Whitney, even though she's mad at Whitney. And I think Lisa in her delusional mind was thinking she's going to invite her, but doesn't really want her to come. And Whitney's like, um, this is a film event for this show and I'm getting paid to do this, so I'm showing up. So a little bit of a, you know, suspense of disbelief is out there. But anyway, she's on her way. She just finds it odd that Lisa invited her. And Lisa invited you, but she didn't invite you. Really, the producers invited you because this is a group event for the show. I just want that to be clear. And, um, so anyway, um, Whitney shares that she hasn't talked to a lot of the ladies since the reunion, and this, is, this especially is applicable to Lisa. And things are awkward. Um, because, by the way, she does show up finally. And it's awkward because Lisa doesn't really want her there. And it's Lisa's event. And Whitney goes to talk to everyone else but Lisa, even though it's Lisa's event. So that's kind of rude. But, yeah, we know that's what just happened. And so from there... We have something else popping off. So at this point, we meet Brittany. And Brittany is the fr is um, Heather's friend. And we find out that she's dating Jared Osmond. Or was. She's on and off with this guy. And this is um, the nephew of Donnie and Marie. The, Osmond, um, the Osmonds. And... In Mormon um, Utah culture, they're a big deal. They're basically the Mormon Jackson 5, the white Jackson 5. That's what I used to call them because they kind of copied the, they copied and pasted the whole entire thing. They're the original new kids on the block. Okay? So, you know, let me give you, let me put you on to some history. So, the Jackson 5 came out first and then the Osmonds came out and they literally did the exact same thing 
that the Jackson 5 did copy and paste it. So Mia's, we always kind of looked at them like, okay, we see what y'all doing. And then fast forward in the 80s, a similar thing happened. New Edition was the original, like, kind of like, um, so after the Jackson 5 was success, New Edition kind of was like the newer version of it and kind of helped basically build what boy bands became. And so everyone just followed that formula of the boy band thing from New Edition. But let someone else tell it, they did that from New Kids on the Block. But New Kids on the Block was literally a copy and paste of New Edition, similar to what happened, you know, back then, before. So if y'all didn't know that, because I know I might have some younger people watching this, now you know. Anyway, so apparently she's dating one of them, and um, the Osmonds, and or was dating them or whatever. But my first impression of her <laughs> is based off this scene alone, and I want to know what yours is after I talk about it. So um, Bronwyn and Mary, they actually are seated together, and they're just talking, because this is just a mix and mingle portion but at this point right away, right at this moment. And they're bonding over fashion. They both are wearing like these outfits and they're like, oh my gosh, I love your fashion. Oh my gosh, I love your fashion. And you can tell that I, I feel like Mary and her are going to get along, which is great because I actually love that now this season, Mary is like trying to be more with this group. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's cute. And so then um, Brittany joins them and sits in between them in the couch and she basically thinks she's complimenting Bronwyn, but she's not. She's like, oh, I love your costume. She calls her couture a costume. And what gets me is like, even I would have been like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Why would you say that? Because what, yes, Bronwyn is wearing something very over the top. But the thing is, what she's wearing is something that Rihanna's worn before. And they even, the producers even show what she's wearing and how much it is. I, it, it looks kind of, it looks different. And if you're not into like that kind of fashion, I could see how you would say that. But I also feel like someone who would say that is someone who's kind of basic. Um, don't, don't, don't judge. Don't judge. But I guess for me, I got the fashion. I, I saw it is. Couture. And so that's where this title of fashion or, or like um, costume or couture, that's how the episode came to be because of this. And so clearly, Bronwyn is offended. <clears throat> and so is Mary. Because Mary is like, you know, into fashion too. And she's like, girl, what? Um, and then in the um, confessional, Mary's like, who is this? Why is she here? Because then it gets worse. She went from insulting Bronwyn to then she goes to insult Mary. And she, she just is not good with words, <laughs> clearly. And so from then, they try to move on. And then Brittany, and so then Mary tries to open up about how, like, she's really into fashion. Because basically, Mary and Bronwyn just try to pay her dust, continue talking about try to talk about fashion and like how much they love fashion and all that. And so Mary's like, yeah, I just have, I have so much clothes that I actually converted my office into a closet because of all the fashions. And then Brittany's like, oh, so you hoard? And then she called Mary a hoarder. And it's like, and then Bronwyn's like, oh my gosh, she really needs a thesaurus. What the heck? She did say it out loud in her breath, like, this girl needs a thesaurus. <laughs> and Mary is just over it. She's like, are you kidding me? And then, um, and then Brittany knows she messed up. So she's trying to make it better. It's like, yeah, she's like, okay, well, I get you. It's just like, you know, want to have more things because when you're poor, you do that. And then Mary's like, I never said I was poor and had been poor before. She clocked it. 
And honestly, I'm sorry. I'm on Mary's side on this one. Don't ever assume I'm poor. Just because I do something a certain way, don't ever assume out it's because I was poor. She did make that assumption out of nowhere. And Brown was like, oh my God. And so Mary was just done with her and just walked. She was like, and Mary's like, excuse me, I'll be right back. And you knew she ain't coming back. She gone. And, <laughs> and then Brittany was like, oh my gosh, I just offended her. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> you think? <laughs> and so that's, that was funny. And that's kind of what happened there. Not a good first, first impression, Brittany. Horrible first impression, actually. Side note. So in the confessional, um, Mary does also kind of shade the crap out of her, Brittany's uh, fashion and what she's wearing. Because, let, to be fair, I mean, I wouldn't wear what any of them were. Well, I would maybe wear Mary's, like, oversized coat. That's cute. But all the other things I probably wouldn't have worn. No shade. But anyway, so then... Um, <clears throat> next we have Meredith, um, talking to Heather because she's like, oh, Whitney's here because Meredith also has unresolved issues with Whitney. And we flash back to three weeks ago. And this is where I talked to you about how like Meredith is talking about that at her house. But we also do find out that Meredith had breast reduction surgery, like the second time or third time or something like that. And... Also, Meredith is upset with Whitney because um, she feels like Whitney is stepping over her launching products. So apparently Whitney, so Meredith was going to launch a jury line. Whitney does it to step over, st step over it, according to Meredith. And then um, Whitney launches a bath line like bath bombs and stuff like that and meredith is obsessed with everything bath that's like her whole entire stick it she is all obsessed with baths and so she thinks that whitney stepped over this as well and is being shady and it's one of those things like two things might be true but at this point, I'm kind of leaning towards Meredith as being very delusional because Meredith is Meredith is cook, kooky, and this is why we love her. We know she's a little off, but she's fun and great for the show for this reason. Um. So anyway, from there we see that Lisa is talking to all the ladies about Jack and his mission, how he's doing so, so great. And of course, in, in the Lisa type of way, Lisa is not talking about anything that has to do with the Mormon mission and him doing the mission work and him growing in that way. She's talking about all of like the aesthetic things, everything that's like very big. She's basically treating it like Jack's on this long vacation in Columbia. But we knew she was going to do that because <clears throat> she did that even when it came to the mission part leading up to it so and i don't know if this is going to be contentious later on i feel like it's not because i think this season we see that heather and lisa re finally resolved that long issue the longest issues that they had about butting heads so i think they're going to stay allies this seasons and really <clears throat> pardon me really um Heather was the only one that kind of had an issue with Lisa being a non-traditional Mormon. Um, so there. And also put in the comments, by the way, if you are Mormon or you have more education on the Mormon church, if Lisa being a non-traditional Mormon, is that truly a problem for the church or not? I don't know. I guess I assume that Mormons, just like any other religion, where you have different forms and different denominations and different walks of like whether you're liberal or conservative when it comes to religion um i know when i was lutheran um which is you know a denomination of you know christianity i um i have i had some conservative views but i was pretty liberal for the most part and so was like my family um so i guess honestly I was more moderate. I will say I was 
have a kind of a moderate view. Um, and then as I got older, and I, I do still consider myself to be a Christian. I'm just Christian with the side of spirituality. I lean more on, more on the spirituality side of things these days than I do when it comes to like the religion side of things, just because I think religion in general can be flawed. Um, but my beliefs are still my beliefs, so there's that. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, that's another thing for those who don't have never watched this show. That's really kind of different about this franchise is there is a lot of emphasis on religion because they are in Salt Lake City, Utah. And we know Mormon. Mormonism is huge in that region. But then we also have other people with other religions there. Like, um, for example, Angie is Greek, is very Greek. So she's Greek Orthodox, everything. Um, then we have a uh, Meredith who's Jewish. Um, and then we have... Uh, Mary, who is Christian, so and actually used to lead a church. Um, so very different walks of life here. So anyway, so Meredith and Whitney go to talk to each other, and Meredith immediately confronts Whitney about the whole bath bomb situation. And the thing is, to the point where everyone is paying attention to them going back and forth, and Mary's like, they're really arguing over bath bombs. <laughs> like and Mary is just judging them in disgust. She's like, I find that baths are kind of gross, and I do agree with Mary to a certain extent. Um, because Meredith takes baths every day, and it's like, girl, do you take showers though? Because for me, this is what it is for me. In order for me to take a bath, I have to take a full-on shower first and then I take the bath afterwards. But because there's so much effort in doing that, I basically rarely ever take baths. I just take showers because I don't want to sit in dirty bath water. Because if you take a bath with prior to taking a shower, ill. <laughs> and that's literally what kind of Mary was alluding to. And she's like, and Mary was like, she even took it a step further. She's like, I feel like that's like a, a great equation to get like a yeast infection. And I'm just like, yeah, gross. <laughs> Mary's commentating. And this is what, why I love that Mary is back because Mary's commentating for me is everything. She is shady as all get out and so unserious. If you take offense to her, girl, like y'all just need to lighten up. I think last season it became a little too much, but because she's involved this season, it's so far I'm loving it. But anyway, so then um, Meredith is expecting um, people to apologize to her because she's like, she's saying that Monica is the one who said all these things that claim that that claim that Meredith said these things. Well, really, that's, we know that's not true all the way. It was both of them. And so, Meredith's not taking any accountability. And therefore, Lisa, <clears throat> so therefore then, you know, Whitney's not getting an apology. And Whitney is like, because it goes from bath bomb to talking about the reality of Auntie Sebadal. And, and um, Whitney's just looking at her like, girl, I'm not going to apologize to you. Because you did say those things. You did say some of those things. I'm not going to apologize to you for that. And then Whitney just kind of walks away. And then as Whitney's walking away, I felt like, su su like subliminally that tagged um, Angie in because Angie immediately goes right to Meredith because, by the way, Meredith and Angie did not resolve anything. And they've been be beefing based off the reality of Auntie stuff at all. And because that got brought up, that was like, okay. And so... Um, Angie's like, I think you owe me an apology. And Meredith's like, what do I owe you an apology for? <laughs> and Angie, girl, girl, it landed though. I was a little worried whether it was going to land or not, but I was cracking up. This girl brought a scroll of a list of things that Meredith need to apologize to her for and then she proceeds to read it off and all of the ladies at this party are gagged they're like not a scroll <laughs> not a scroll <laughs> so it actually lands 
landed. It landed. I was a little worried. But because Angie is so unserious, and she did it because she was like, I wanted Meredith to have a little bit of a sense of humor about it. Like, I was trying to be kind of campy about it, but because she's so cold, she couldn't even find the funny in it. I was like, oh my God. And then even Mary in her commentary, she's like, yeah, she like got the paper and then she got the, and then she got some glue and then she, she literally proceeds in her confessional to start talking about how Angie put this scroll together, wrote everything down and then rolled it up. And she's like, you know, she worked hard on that. She's a hard worker. Probably has a little too much time on her hands, but she did that. I was like, oh my. I, I ain't gonna hold you. I rewound that scene because I cracked. I was cracking up. That was funny. That was funny to me. I was like, Angie. Angie is great for this show because she's so over the top and so unserious. And that's why I think we love her because she's so unserious. Like from her obnoxious sunglasses to this. And also now, by the way, Mary has some obnoxious sunglasses because now they're besties. So this is just so funny. But anyway, Meredith walks away and because she shook. There was nothing she could do about that. And all the ladies are just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she brought that scroll out. And then fast forward, Lisa does have a speech and she does briefly mention she doesn't like podcasts, kind of shading um, Whitney. And then invites the ladies to get seated for dinner. Um, and then the lady, the seating is assigned, which is great, but not so great because Mary actually gets su stuck sitting next to Brittany after that whole entire fiasco. And Mary was trying to get Angie to switch her, and Angie, I guess, didn't hear her, so they are still seated where they're seated at. And then, and, and then um, Heather does actually officially introduced Brittany to the ladies and said, hey, she's going through a hard time. So I figured this would be a good time for her to meet everyone. And that's kind of what happens there. And then Whitney and Bronwyn, they start to bond because they have a similar situation when it comes to the family dynamics of having the older stepkids are around their age while their husbands are older. So they're bonding over that. And then from there, the ladies, um, from that, Meredith and Angie get into it yet again. And the ladies really want Angie to move on. But Angie clearly is not ready to move on yet. But she does eventually move on. And I ain't gonna hold you. She did kind of need to move on from it. But I don't think it's, I don't think it's over with. It's gonna get brought up again. Because it never got resolved. I mean, it was alluded at the very beginning of this episode that everything other than the reality Von Tees piece did not get, not, nothing else got resolved when it came to reunion. So, yeah, there's still going to be some underlying beef, beef, and there's going to be even more that brews after, after this dinner is over with. So then, um, next... So Lisa and Whitney, so Whitney discussed a podcast thing right away, that podcast shade right away. She's like, girl, what was that about? And um, they start going back and forth at me, heavy back and forth. It's like no mixing words, none of that. They're going heavy on it, on the back and forth. And um, Basically, Whitney's like, what do you want me to apologize for? Like, I didn't lie about anything. Because basically, Lisa's calling her a liar. She's like, you, you lied about me and my character. And she's like, I didn't lie about anything. And then from there, um, she was like, I knew you were going to say this stuff, too. Because someone, like, you know, Whitney slipped up and said, like, I knew you were going to say this about me and this, that, and this. And uh, I knew you were upset about the podcast. And then that's when Lisa spice and says tingle. She's like, wait a minute. The only people who knew about my beef about the podcast thing is Heather and Angie. Who told you? And then right then and there, they're on the spot. And Heather right away is like, look, I had nothing to do with it. 
And then we see a flashback of Angie arriving at Whitney's new home. And it was Angie. And Angie's like, yeah, I did have a conversation with her about that. And, and Lisa is flying off the handle. I mean, really flying off the handle. She's like, I was talking to you in confidence about this. I was going to confront her about that. Why do you need to run back and tell her this, that, and this, and that? So now Lisa's upset with both Whitney and Angie because she's like, you violated my trust. And then she throws, and then um, Lisa throws a glass. And then Meredith's like, who threw the glass? Like, it's just like, it's chaos because Lisa is on one when it comes to this. And then from there, Whitney's like, I don't lie. I don't lie. I don't know why you call me a liar. And then that activates everyone else who has a beef with Whitney. So then Meredith chimes in and then Heather chimes in. They're like, and they're all tag teaming her at once. Like all three of them. They're like, you lie about this. You lie about this. You lie about this. You lie about this. And this is a case of if Ashley Darby was ever called out, this is what it looks like. <laughs> but Whitney recovered. She was like, so y'all just going to gain up on me now? Because <laughs> they weren't gaining up on her. I was like, wow. And then um, Angie's like, oh my gosh, this is a bit much. And, she, and, then, and then Whitney's like, this is a bit much. So she didn't resolve anything. She didn't really, you know, talk about the issues about them getting what they're getting up on her about. But she had it out because they were getting up on her. <laughs> and then she goes from there to talking about, and then Lisa does like kind of say the hard the issues like, I think you judge me because of your he healing journey. You expect everyone to be where you're at in your healing journey. And we're not all there. And um, Whitney's like, well, you should be. And no, girl, you need, to, you need to go back to the lab when it comes to your healing journey. If you feel like everyone needs to be exactly where you're at when you're healing. It's about you healing. It's not about everyone else healing at the same time as you. Yeah. And so... Um, basically Whitney's like, do you want the old me to come out? And Lisa's like, yes. And she's like, well then F you, I'm out. And so she goes to leave and she's like, yeah, then get out. Like you don't get to cuss me out of my party, which right. You don't do, you don't get to do that. And so she proceeds to leave and then her friend of leaves. So we never really got to, got to know the friend of maybe in the next episode we will, but we never did get to know her and Angie leaves with her too. And um, Lisa's like, and then Heather's like, cause Lisa's like, I, I guess Angie isn't our, isn't our friend either. She's leaving with her. And Heather's like, but I'm friends with her. She's, and then Meredith's like, child, she chose a side. You better, you better, that, that, that might not be correct. <laughs> and that's where the episode ends. And when I tell you this first episode was good to me, it was. I had a good cackle. I watched it this morning. Um, sorry for the delay on this being out. Um, moving forward, this will be out either on Thursday or Fridays, the, re the review for this particular show. And then for Salt, um, and then for Orange County, that's going to be on Friday or Saturday. Back to the normal schedule, finally, because I was gone on vacation, but your girl's back. But anyway, that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka The Melon Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye!